Hi guys, um, just recently I put a post out on my Facebook page to say that I was meeting up with my, my old friend Luke Coppins, uh, he's over in the UK uh, helping me promote West Inn and uh, we're visiting a few of the retailers over here to talk to them about it and I thought it would be a great opportunity really to uh, ask Luke some questions and, and rather than just see me waffling on about it really I thought I'd throw it out there on Facebook and see what uh, people come up with pro uh, question wise. So. Without more to ado, Luke, uh, let's ask you some questions. Yeah, that's fine. Fine for me. Yeah. So uh, you've been lure fishing pretty much solely now for what twenty odd years? Yeah, twenty years. Before that, I did a little bit of mix of everything and uh, did some carp fishing and uh, did only uh, predator fishing in the winter time. But then I uh, totally switched to predator fishing only, and uh, since then I fished with lures only for the last twenty years. So yeah. Yeah. Nice. And obviously you must have seen the lure fishing scene in, in Europe change massively in that time. What, what kind of changes has there been and, and what, what, what's the current trends? Yeah, when I started with uh, food and lure fishing uh, 20 years ago you only had the super shed from, uh, from Rugula. Yeah. And uh, that was a big lure for us, so uh, we caught a lot of fish on it. But, uh, and then I found uh, in, in, in a local shop I found uh, a jerkbait and uh, it was the only one they have. And uh, I buy it, and we started to fish with jerk baits, and uh, and then after that we started to buy jerk baits in, uh, in the states, and uh, that was very trending in, in that time. The first five, four or five years we fished only with the uh, jerk baits, and they became, became bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, then I started to fish uh, the NKS competitions, the Zen competitions, yeah. and we did more vertical fishing. Um, and that was really a trend because I think this vertical fishing was born in, in Holland. Yeah. And uh, really big events uh, like uh, 50, 80 boats with two really? yeah. men in a boat. So uh, with big prices and uh, especially in the last years uh, the, the, the biggest prices were a big boat with motor and a trailer complete. So yeah. Um, and it's, it's changing all the time because uh, what I see now Vertical fishing in Holland, it's, it looks like to be uh, over the top, yeah. still a lot of people are doing it, but uh, more and more people like the, the casting now right. for, uh, for Zender. Yeah. Uh, I also like it more, yeah. because maybe it's because it's different, but I think it's also, uh, it has more to do with the technique. Right. And uh, also the bites when you do casting yeah. from a Zender, yeah, I'm addicted on it. Yeah. They can be so hard. Really hard yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, even I, I think in over the years I caught maybe more than 5,000 senders, but still yeah. I'm thrilled when I have a bite like that. Yeah. So uh, that's something I see more and more casting with uh, with jets, light lead heads. And uh, what I see now changing is uh, more and more people start to fish with Carolina rigs and yeah. Texas rigs. That's uh, Influence it from, from the states, from the best fishing, and uh, that's coming up now. And uh, you also have the street fishing, mm -hmm. that's also new for the last five, six years. Uh, a lot of people do that with small lures, yeah. lots of in, in, in yeah. the canals and uh, in the lakes in Rotterdam and Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, very popular. Fun. So, a lot of people are fishing now with lures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic, fantastic. Well, let's, let's get to some of the other questions um, in no particular order, I must say, but. There we go. So Dan Brackley, hello Dan. I uh, hope you're right, mate. Uh, Dan's asked, how do you manage your time in in the competitions? Obviously, in a lot of the competitions, you've got to catch pike, perch, and zander, and yes. you're using very yes, different yes, yes, yes. Ta ta techniques. Yeah. How do you go about it? Yeah, this kind of competitions are different because, uh, like the VPC, like we said, and the predator tour, uh, you have to catch a mix of uh, predators, and these are the competitions I like the most because uh, there you can uh, use all your skills. And uh, you can always make a plan, and I always do. And uh, especially in the night before the competition, I'm, I'm, I'm a disaster because I can't yeah. sleep. <laughs> and the first night, it's not too bad, uh, but I cannot sleep. And uh, I make the plans in the night, and uh, I make a plan A, B, C, and uh, you will see. Um, but especially two years ago, I had a, a plan because I was looking to the weather forecast and I said okay we have to get spurts, zander, pike and uh, there was a lot of wind predicted, uh, uh, predicted and I said let's go for the perch first because perch they like to have clear water mm -hmm. they, they, they are more hunting on visibility 
and uh, that was a good gamble because I caught my three birds very early in the morning and just when I when I had them the wind started to blow and then the water was the visibility in the water was like only this anymore and then you can forget it to yeah. get uh, the birds right. so that was the right choice for that day yeah but uh, every day is different and you need you need to make a plan but you need also to be flexible on the yeah. day yeah. itself because last year I also make my plans mm -hmm. and uh, then you have plan A you, you drive the boat for 10 kilometers in big waves and finally you are there on the spot but I have a, a big engine yeah. but not the biggest yeah so uh, <laughs> Um, I come to the spot, already two boats on the stretch, right. and you need to stay 150 meters from each other. So, not possible to, to, to fish on that stretch. I go to plan B, another five kilometers drive. I come there, also boats. And then, yeah, then you, you, you lose a feeling, you know, and yeah. uh, that can uh, work against you. So, you also need a little bit of luck. So, I think it's very important you need to be flexible on, on the day itself yeah. and, and see what, what you can do. Yeah, cool, good stuff. Um, we've already talked a, bit, a little bit about this, but um, a real good question, I think, from Richard Wesley. Hello, Rich. Um, uh, a lot of these guys I know from, from fishing on the reservoirs. Um, and, and this is really something that we've all faced at some time. Rich has asked, um, if you're fishing on, on, on lures and not catching, what what do you change? What's the, the process that goes through your mind? Do you change the style of lure, you retrieve the, the colours? What what's your? How do you sort of progress through it? I think this this question is more specific for uh, for your kind of reservoirs. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a lot of experience with that. I fished a few times with you on the reservoirs, and uh, but for me, for my fishing in in Holland and, and everywhere, uh, I look a lot to the colour of the water, yeah. and that's for me priority look to the visibility in the water and I see that not so many people are doing that mm -hmm. uh, but if the water is, is having a, is, when it's very clear and a bit very clear I, I think about the visibility of two meters I always drop my lure in the, in the water mm -hmm. and I see how far it, it, it is then uh, if it's very clear I, the fish is most of the time deeper when it's uh, not so clear like visibility of 50 centimeters you can already think okay they will be not that deep um, also for uh, for the for the lures you're using when the, when, the, when the water is not clear I rather use uh, pedal tails because yeah. they make more vibration mm -hmm. uh, that can be a, a big difference uh, because when you fish with a with a V tail with not so much vibration maybe they don't take it at all yeah so um, yeah that's you have to try many many things. And I cannot give an answer. Yeah. <laughs> one answer. It's it's very difficult to give one answer on that. Um, so I try many different things, but I think if you always, every time when you go fishing, look to the water visibility. Yeah. You will learn about that. Yeah. And I think you should think about that all the time. Yeah. Even on one lake, it can be different. Um, I see that in Holland sometimes when we had the predator tour. Uh, Two years ago with 110 boats and we won it and the key there was just simple there was so much new water coming in mm -hmm. from from the rivers that made the, the water a lot colored and there was only visibility like that that there was the key was to find a part of the lake where the water visibility was a little bit better yeah and yeah that was the key right that, that moment. Right. often we get that on some of the reservoirs where they, they pump in the water yeah, from the yeah, river yeah, so it can yeah, create a lot yeah, of, yeah, lot of uh, yeah, yeah. suspended uh, yeah. silt and stuff in the water yeah. so yeah, for, for similar conditions for for Zander, that can can be fantastic yeah uh, to be in that neighborhood the pike doesn't like it mm. so pike mm. will move away from it yeah and then maybe will come to it so mm. and uh, yeah, what I found out in the winter time, because the question was, uh, what will you do if, if you don't catch it on lures? Yeah. Uh, uh, what I see now and on big lakes in Holland in the winter time, when the temperature of the water is only six degrees, they are not so aggressive on lures. Mm. So sometimes uh, we fish with fireballs. Yeah. That's a lead head with a dead dead bait, and they do take it. Yeah. And uh, you can fish with any lure you want in that time of the year very few bites, mm. very few bites will, mm. you will have. So that's 
drain logs. Yeah, but, different yeah. things. It's something yeah. I've, I've tried the fireball quite a lot over here, and, and I've, I've never really felt I've got to grips with it. So we'll have to have a day something. Yeah, and uh, I've, try. Uh, I've faced a lot of competitions, zender competitions, yeah. and uh, in Holland, if you join the zender competitions in the winter time, you have to use fireballs yeah. because if you don't, you make no chance to win. Really? In my normal fishing, like now, I don't do the zender competitions anymore because uh, it's, it gives me too much uh, stress because. You have to fish 10 competitions in a year. Yeah. I cannot make the combination with the, with the other big competitions. It's yeah. not possible uh, with yeah. my job. So I quit that. So in my normal fishing, like last weekend I fished, uh, I don't fish with fireballs. But um, in the competitions, where if it is allowed to fish with a fireball in the winter time, you have to. Right. Because otherwise, you don't make a chance. Yeah. So that efficient can be a fireball. Yeah. Yeah. Really? And yeah. Excellent. Interesting. So, uh, we're going to do a part two. I just want to change the batteries on the camera and make sure we don't run out of memory. So, uh, join us in part two in a sec. Cheers.